Paramount Plus? More like Paramount minus one billion dollars? Welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers, everybody. Lieutenant William here. I hope you are doing excellently. Today, we're talking about the future of Star Trek in light of the recent dour financial report from Paramount. Please do like, share, and subscribe, too. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so I'm going to read a few excerpts from an article in Variety. Quote, shares of Paramount Global tumbled as much as 25% in early trading Thursday, after the media conglomerate reported disappointing first quarter 2023 results and slashed its dividend. Paramount posted a Q1 net loss of $1.12 billion. The company said Paramount Plus added 4.1 million subscribers in the quarter, coming to a total of 60 million overall, end quote. So that's the good news. At least they've recently gained a ton of subscribers. Thing is, that's still about a fourth of what the big guys, Netflix and Disney, have. And it's not like those two are Paramount's only competition. Okay, back to the article, quote, Paramount CEO Bob Backish addressed the writer's strike, telling investors and analysts that we hope we can come to a resolution that works for everyone fairly quickly, but that it's also fair to say there's a really big gap. Paramount has a lot in the can, so to speak, content in the can, he added. So with the exception of things like late night, consumers really won't notice anything for a while. He said the company is focused on continuing to drive market-leading streaming growth while navigating a dynamic macroeconomic environment. According to the company, Paramount Plus subscribers' growth was driven by a strong content slate, including originals like 1923, Tulsa King, and the returns of Mayor of Kingstown and Star Trek Picard, along with films Top Gun Maverick and Teen Wolf the movie, as well as the NFL playoffs, end quote. So that's cool to know that Star Trek Picard did a lot of good for them. But, uh, you know, the future is uncertain, it's safe to say, in no uncertain terms. One thing that I've heard talk of is Paramount Plus just calling it quits, which would not mean an end to Star Trek. It would mean that they would then basically sell or license out the rights to their various intellectual properties, like Star Trek, to the highest bidder. So the interesting question becomes, who would want Star Trek, and who do you want to get Star Trek? Personally, I think Netflix is the most likely candidate. We know they were interested in Trek before Discovery sort of failed to do anything for them when they got it. Then they had Next Gen and, what, DS9 and Voyager? But that didn't last. Anyway, they might not be interested in streaming Kurtzman Trek, but they may be very interested in acquiring the rights to make their own Star Trek shows that are actually more in line with the more popular older shows, like Next Gen and Voyager. Just possibly. It's also possible Warner would end up doing this. Both Netflix and Warner know that they could use a big sci-fi franchise. Disney already has Star Wars, so I don't think they'll be interested. They also already have the Orville that they apparently still just can't decide what to do with. Bring it back, pronto! That's what I say. But Seth MacFarlane is currently working with NBC for the Peacock streaming service, so it's interesting to think he might push for them to get the rights to Star Trek, and we might actually get to see him make some real Trek after all. Star Trek back on NBC. There's something nice about that idea, I gotta say. Now, I've never really liked Amazon shows, except for The Expanse, but that started out on the Sci-Fi Channel. But anyway, I hope Amazon doesn't end up making even worse Trek than Kurtzman. Now, Season 3 of Picard, Madeless Trek, was a huge success for Paramount, bringing in a lot of subscribers. So, I wouldn't be surprised if the Starfleet Academy show gets dropped in favor of more Madeless Trek, to be honest. I'd bet there are accountants over there right now pointing out that, logically, they have no alternative. Even though I know Kurtzman just signed another contract with Paramount. That's the thing, you have to think, if someone else gets the rights to Star Trek, there's no way they would let Kurtzman anywhere near it. I mean, 
he should have made CBS All Access a real contender in the streaming wars with Trek. He had that opportunity, and instead, they had to rebrand and change their name, and it's still not working. So I wouldn't be surprised if Matalus or someone like Ira Stephen Bear or Ronald D. Moore or Brandon Braga was put in charge of Star Trek over at Netflix in a couple of years. I think that'd be real cool. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see happen with Star Trek, though, and please subscribe to help us out also. Also, like and share and turn on notifications. Thanks so much, guys. Live long and prosper. Kapla!